Hello, everybody. So I've already recorded this once, so I'm gonna do it again because I kept saying um, 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 like 52 million times. So I apologize if I go into a funk and go um. Anyway, so I'm sorry that I haven't done any video. I'm sorry, I keep tilting on you guys. Okay, let me straighten that back up again. <laughs> I haven't put up any videos because I've been so focused on school. I'm in my fifth week of school. Next week is our sixth week and it's our last week and we're testing. Everybody, please keep me in your prayers and in your thoughts for that. Uh, I wanted to let you guys know a little bit about the experience of um, school. It's been really awesome. I didn't know what to expect. You go into it where you're like, I've never driven a truck. How am I going to learn? How do I do anything? And they kind of throw you in like super fast, but that's good because for me, that really, really works. So we drove like the second day we were in. I apologize for my sexy shirt, but it's really comfortable and it's the weekend. So forgive me. Anyway, I digress. So they threw you in. They just throw you in the pond and expect you to swim, which we drove like the second day. Uh, they're stick shifts, so we don't have any restrictions on our CDL license, so we'll be able to drive automatics and stick shifts, which is, I'm very, very grateful for. That's what I wanted. I'm glad it's a six-week course because it's taken this long to get very comfortable with shifting and downshifting, which was a new experience for me. With downshifting, you've got to slow that truck down before you make any turns or anything like that, and that's a concept that was not... It was it wasn't I'm not I'm not used to it. It was weird. So anyway, what you do with a downshift is you're like say you're in eighth your ninth gear, okay, you're going like 40, 45 miles an hour in ninth gear, and you have to bring it down to 30, then you've got to put it in the gear that's appropriate for 30, which is eighth. So you have to get it down to 30 miles an hour, then you have to put the gear in neutral, and then you have to accelerate, bring up the RPMs to uh, like 12,000 and then you got to pop it into eighth gear and then you do the same thing you go back down to sixth gear because you don't want to hit any turns and stuff like that you you got to downshift it's so learning that concept was very odd and learning how to do that gracefully was very difficult let's just say it's my fifth week and I just got it down so yeah I kind of grind the gears just a little bit I mean it's not all my fault the truck is really old but Okay, I'm the queen of grinding the gears. That being said, I don't do that anymore, and I'm graceful. Um, there's two other people in my class. Let's just say they grind the gears more than I do, so I feel a little bit better about it. <laughs> but, even, you know, I've talked to old soul, uh, salted truck drivers that have said they still grind the gears, and they've been driving for 25 years, so I don't feel too, too bad. I'm relatively 95% pretty smooth. Um, so anyway, so you learn to drive and then you learn to brake properly. And um, we started doing backing procedures probably in the third week. Uh, we have, for the CDL test, you have an offset, a straight line, and an alley dock. Uh, straight line's easy the thing about truck driving if you've never truck drived if you have you haven't um is that when you're backing you're turning the wheel the opposite way of where you want that trailer to go so if you're wanting that trailer to go more to the left you're having to turn the tractor the front part of it right to um start it on its path of where you want the trailer to go so you have to do opposite when you pull up to correct a, a positioning you're pulling straight on. So if I want the trailer to go right, I'm going to I'm gonna pull up and go right. Uh, so it got a little bit confusing because the, it's all about opposites and non-opposites and when to apply the wheels in a certain turn and when, when to chase the trailer, which is where you're turning the wheel towards where the trailer is going because you want it to go there. So it's a lot of like things you didn't think of. Um, I love backing. It's fascinating to me the... The, it's fascinating to me that to move this maneuver this 53 foot thing into these little tiny alleys so it's challenging and it's fun we do these food bank runs for um, Montgomery 
between Montgomery and Auburn here in Alabama. And that was exciting because we got to drive it down to Montgomery, dock it in an actual dock, get loaded, and then be able to drive the truck when it was empty down there and feel the difference of when it's got 30, 40,000 pounds in the trailer and it's not empty anymore. The difference is amazing. And then you have to put your mindset into a different gear because you can't pull out in fourth anymore. Now you've got to pull out in second because it's got more power and more torque. It's amazing how much power these trucks really, really have. It's fascinating. Going back to schooling, like when you're first driving and stuff like that, you're terrified. You know, you're like, you've got like white knuckles on the steering wheel and you're, you're like tense and your shoulders are tense. So you go home because uh, our schedules uh, for the college that I go to were 10 hour days. It's four days a week, 10 hour days. By the time you get home, 6.30 at night, you are worn out. You are slap worn out. I was not prepared for that. I was not prepared for the fact that you're physically and mentally just drained because you're trying to suck in all this information. You're trying to learn muscle memory for these new maneuvers and it, it, it literally wipes you out. Plus, it doesn't hap help to, that it's been like 90-something degrees every day and you're outside on a track for 10 hours a day. And you start out in the morning doing great. You're like, woohoo, I'm back, did I did it, I did everything. And then by 2.30, you're so tired and hot and sore from working that clutch all day long that it's like you never learned a thing in your life and you screw up so bad. And then you get mad at yourself because you're like, I had it this morning, why do I not have it this afternoon? And I would get so mad at myself and I would get so frustrated and I would get um, very down on myself because I was like, why am I not getting this? Why am I not doing this? And I had to keep reminding myself two things. One, you've never done this before. You can't master driving a tractor trailer in six weeks and, you know, be the queen of the universe, Leanne. Good Lord, have some patience, which I don't have any patience whatsoever. And the second thing was I had to stop being so hard on myself because it's 90 damn degrees and I have been in the sun for 10 hours and my brain has shut down and my knees are screaming and my thighs are screaming from working that clutch and working that clutch. So I had to stop beating the crap out of myself. <laughs> and realize it's okay. You're not going to be perfect and you're not going to have something down 100%. You're going to screw up. People that have been doing it forever screw up. So I had to stop this spiral of negativity and get myself popped out of that place and continue on. Um, so it, I said, um, again, dang. I keep, it's hard not to say, um, why do we do that? Anyway, I digress again. So anyway, next week is the test. So the test consists of backing, which is your straight line, your alley, and your offset. And then once you pass that, you go out for the road trip. So we've been practicing both things. We've been going out on the road trip. The driving part of it, no problem. I got it. Um, I just have to be more aware. Always be aware. That was the one thing I learned about being in track driving school is that you need to be extremely aware of everything at all times. So you are constantly moving. Anybody who tells you truck driving is easy is full of crap because it's hard as hell. I mean, you're constantly having to watch your mirrors all the time, all the time, all the time. And then you're watching your trailer and you're watching the cars in front of you. And then while you're doing all that, you're making sure you're in the right gear and you're making sure that your signs, you, you know what mile markers you're at, you know what, how far you are from things. So you have to be super hyper aware of your surroundings, your environment and your signs and just at your space just your space you have to be the king of your space and so it's different it's definitely different so the road test I feel confident on I mean I'm not perfect per se but I feel very confident that I've got it I've always been very good about spatially being able to stay in my lane and stuff like that even in boating and all that I'm really pretty decent about direction and stuff like that so that I'm not too, too worried about. Uh, you have to do a pre-check first. That's a little bit intimidating because you have to do what's called a safe start, which is where you have to go through the entire, you have to do the entire truck. I know 
I know more about a semi tractor trailer than I know about my own personal car. Like I can tell you the, where the coolant is and how much should be in there and the oil and how much should be in there and where the gearbox is and where the steering linkage is and where the air compressor is and where the alternator is and the brake systems like boom, 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 brake lines, brake chambers, slack adjusters, push rods, you know, um, then I there's so much about suspension, which is airbags and torsion bars and spring mounts, control arms, depending on what truck you have, um, brake drums, rims, lug. I mean, you have to know everything. You have to know how much tread depth should be on each tire. Y you have to learn. But it's all fascinating because it's stuff that you're like, this is for me. I learned it easy because I'm interested in it. It's fascinating to me. So I'm very excited about that. The The part I always forget about is the in-cab check, which I've got it, but you have to know all your, your oil pressures and your temperatures, like your oil has to be between 5 and 45. Your um, temperature has to be between 180 to 210 in normal working conditions. Your voltage has to be between 12 and 15. Your PSI and your primary and secondary tanks need to be between 90 and 140. So these are all the things you need to like learn it. And you do because the, at school, at least at my school, it's repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. So like every morning we go out and we do a full pre-check of that truck. And I mean full. We're pre-checking the fifth wheel. We're pre-checking the coupling system. We're pre-checking the tractor. We're pre-checking the trailer. We're pre-checking everything and you have to go through all those systems and you have to repeat them over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again so it really drains you know <clears throat> drills into your head the um the main important thing is you're in the in cab you have to be able to do that brake check so you have to really focus on memorizing like which is your trailer valve and which is your tractor valve and when they're engaged and when they're not engaged which is something i got like switched around because I have dyslexia sometimes. Selective dyslexia, I like to say. But anyway, I digress. So anyway, uh, it's it's not as hard as you think it is, but it's not as easy as you imagine it to be. Let's just put it that way, because it's it's been, I think maybe because of our age, because all of everybody in my class, there's only three people in my class, I'm the only girl. But um, one is 56 years old and me and the other guy are 53. So this is pretty much the old people class. The class before me, they were all in their 20s and 30s. They were young little puppies and they think they're invincible. So they just go balls to the wall and do whatever. And then all of us in the old people class are like, ah, <laughs> we're all going slow, taking it easy. But I would rather go slow and easy than go hard and fast any day of the week when it comes to truck driving because that's dangerous you can't it's it's dangerous and everybody let me just say this for all you four-wheel drivers <laughs> coming from a perspective of a truck driver don't pull out in front of us we cannot stop on a dime okay you cannot stop 80,000 pounds or 80 you know it doesn't happen you're going to get rear-ended don't even try it and trust me you're gonna get a lot more damage than I am in that cab okay just remember that. Also, too, don't cut us off. We we can't stop that thing that fast. People are so rude to truckers, and I never realized how rude they were until I started driving, and then I'm all like, people try to shoot, a, like you're making a right turn. They try to shoot around you while you're making the, the right turn. I can't stop in time. There's no way I can stop to do that. So there's things about truck drivers that you have to realize. One, most of all trucks are governed. So when you're on the highway and it's 70 mile an hour, our trucks are governed at 62. So when you get mad at us because we're not going fast enough, please understand we don't have a choice in that. That is how the truck is set up. They govern us at 62 miles an hour. If you get lucky, you can get 65. But we can't do 70. So don't get pissed at us. 
okay? And then that is why sometimes when you see two semis that are going the same speed and you're thinking, what assholes? They've blocked us in. Why are those assholes doing that? That's because they're both governed at 62 miles an hour and they can't pass one another. And they should know not to do that. But sometimes they get angry and they try it anyway and you can't because one wants the other one to back off so he can get in front. And this one says, no, I don't want to. You're going to not get in front of me. So then this one says, well, screw you. I'll stay beside you. And then it's a little battle down the road. And then all of us in cars are stuck behind them because they're being pissy with one another. Please don't be pissy. Back off. Let the guy get in front of you. If he thinks he needs to be in front of you that damn bad, let him in front of you for God's sakes. Um, just be nice. Think about these things. You know, think about truck drivers. We're not all assholes and we're not all out to get everybody in a car but you guys can't be cutting us off and not allowing us time i mean you can't that's the other thing i learned is you can't that there's no tur tight turn radius for the truck you have a 53 foot trailer on the back of you you've got to give it space so if i need to turn i have to borrow some of some lanes and it's like they see you coming and they don't want you to go. So they get in your way and then you have to sit there patiently and wait for them to get out of your way. So be, be, be courteous, okay? Because not everybody that drives a truck is a butthead. I promise you I'm not. I'm sweet. I would let you in front of me because I know you want to go faster than I do. And I would let you in front of me because, and I will. I will let you in front of me. So anyway, I digress again because I'm rambling and I apologize for you guys. But it's been a couple weeks and I haven't given you a video. So I thought I'd give you a video. Uh, don't get freaked out. I did. And don't go down that rabbit hole. I did. But pull yourself out of it. You can do it. It's not rocket science. But it is important that you learn everything. Um, you definitely... You definitely have to know some basic and you have to have some damn common sense. I mean, then that's a rarity these days. But anyway, the experience has been amazing and I'm extremely grateful and I'm extremely blessed to be in this position in my life to where I have amazing parents that are allowing me to change my career and support me while I'm doing this. But I'm going to be so eager to be earning some money so I can pay them back for supporting me. But God God has blessed me truly with some amazing friends, some amazing supportive friends, some amazing, my amazing child who's gives me encouragement when I'm down. I just text her and I go, ah, I'm going down the rabbit hole and she will pump me up with lots of encouragement. So thank you, Anastasia, for that. I greatly appreciate it. You're the best kid in the whole wide world. And my friend Liz Allen, who's amazing, who if I'm freaking out again, she's got my back and she pumps me up with encouragement and she is an amazing woman and I'm blessed to have her in my life. And my parents, again, I'm blessed to have them in my life and my family, so, and uh, it's awesome. So don't be afraid to change your life because amazing things can happen. Thank you guys for letting me ramble and I appreciate you listening and stay tuned because when I go to where I'm supposed to go to after school, which is Total Transport out of Mississippi, uh, I'm scheduled to go there on June the 3rd, which I graduate on the 30th of May and I go straight over to June 3rd to orientation, which is four days of orientation and then a week of backing there and then I go out on the road with the trainer for three to four weeks. And uh, I will let you know how that goes and how exciting that is. <laughs> everybody, please keep me in your prayers and your thoughts and have a great day. And please, everyone, be grateful for everything that we've, you've been blessed with. And we're always blessed with more than we think we are. And look at me. I tear up when I think about that. But be grateful. And I love you guys. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>